Hey, it's Holly. In today's video, we are going to fix a logo on a set that I found that is absolutely trashed. <laughs> it is dirty, it needs to be cleaned, and then we are going to try to refoil the logo. It's probably been now almost two years since I did a attempt at a logo restore, at least a year and a half. And um, historically, it's gone okay, but not perfect. So we're gonna give it another go today and see how it goes. So without further ado, let's get started. So today we are going to attempt to restore this one here. It's got a lot of problems going on. It has some general dirt, lots of surface scratches. You can probably see that there. Um, logo is pretty much all but worn off, so we're just gonna take it, the rest of it off because it's not really there. Um, and try to repair it. Lots of color transfer on the back from some other paint or plastic. And let's have a look at the inside. So <laughs> one figure with a broken arm, very sad. Um, that's gonna stay the way it is for now, but we'll give the inside a bit of a clean. So for the outside here, I'm just going to use some alcohol to take that off. We'll see if that works. So I'm just grabbing, this is just an alcohol wipe that I'm using. Normally I would never put this near the logo because I don't want to take that color off typically, but I'm just trying to get this all clear and the rest will, will get up when we have I don't know what that is, so <laughs> that spot. So we're just going to use alcohol in that too. But the rest will get off with the polish. So kind of rare that we have an opportunity where we can just go to town on the polish because usually we have to dodge some paint or the logo. And today we are not going to have that problem. Okay, so the rest of that should come off with some polish. Who knows what that was? It was gross. Okay, there we are. All right, so that's that. So we're gonna try this properly in the order that it's meant to be in today, which is three, two, and one. So we're coming back to that Novus Polish. Three uh, for heavy scratch, two for fine scratch, and then we have the clean and shine for our final step. So we'll start with the heavy scratch. And again, this is, I'm sure you can see this in the reflection, quite scuffed. That should also get off the remaining gold here and this color transfer on the back without issue. I can't remember, oh, I think this lid's not working very well, but we'll, we'll try. Oh, today it's cooperating. All right. So here we go. All right, after the first pass of that, um, pretty much have almost all of that off. Um, there's still just a little bit of silvered glitter remaining there, but that's probably all gone now. Um, this is quite a significant scuff, so we're going to have to put some muscle into that. But coming around the side, I can see, and I don't know if the color comes across on the camera, but there's some discoloration there. A lot of this is just, this set's quite dirty. So we're just buffing that out. But I can see we are going to have to really put some muscle into the front there. Just going to try to get some of that extra polish out of there while this wipe is still wet. I also have my bag of my standard tools, so different cotton swabs. This pointy one is helpful for getting in places that are a little bit more difficult to get into. So 
sometimes just getting the, all of that white polish off is a little difficult. But we've got the logo clean now, so. That at least is looking, it looks so naked without it, but that's good. So we'll come back and get that squared up. Let's do a first pass on the back here. deep scratches out with the exception of that one on the front that we're just going to work on now. In the back is looking pretty good. I'm just wiping that residue off. scratches on the back that are quite deep and then this one on the front oh okay my hand hurts <laughs> And we're not that far into it, but we're going to keep powering through here. So this is looking significantly better. Now that that first pass is done, we're going to go in with the second polish, which is the fine scratch remover. That is looking pretty darn good. We are going to give it a spray. So I'm going to use the clean and shine. Looks pretty darn good. I'm just giving the edges a wipe where there's a little bit of residue. That is looking nice and clean for us to start our work with the logo. In the meantime, let's have a quick look at the inside. Okay, so I've just wet this with the clean and shine. And this is actually, it's actually quite dirty in here. Um, it's quite a bit of stuff in the tile. If 
you can see that. There's quite a bit of brown on the ends of that. So this one we have to be a bit careful because of course there are um, stickers inside. I can see the sticker is a little bubbled there. Um, so we definitely don't want to get any of that wet because it can just make that bubbling worse. So in case you were thinking, oh, it didn't look that dirty. Here's how gross this <laughs> cotton swab is. So pretty gross. So our outside's nice and clean, our inside's nice and clean. And now we can look at the logo. So I'm gonna clear some space here. So for the logo, we've done this in the past. We haven't done it in a while. I have not done a test run of this recently so we're just gonna go with it um, we're using this gold foil so it's a heat transfer foil honestly I just bought it off of eBay um, tried to find something that was fairly close to the color that is used on poly pockets and it comes in a full roll like this um, so I've just cut off a smaller piece and the important thing is that this silver part is going to be face down you want to make sure that there's no uh, wear on it. So if you look at the edge here, see how there's some missing there right by my thumb. Um, that would mean that it wouldn't transfer in that area. So everything that you're putting on the logo should be nice and clean. The other point is that you're going to need an iron of some sort and you don't want it to be too hot. You could melt the logo. So this is a at your own peril situation. Um, I am using a Clover brand mini iron. Um, looks like this. It's made for like quilting and stuff, but just a tiny little iron. I currently have this one on a medium heat, which I'm hoping is not too hot. Um, so we'll give it a little shot here. I think that's probably too hot, if I'm being honest. That bubbled way too quick. So I'm going to turn it down to low and just give it a second. So you can see that where, I don't think it should bubble that easily, where I had that, um, that's what the transfer looks like. So it comes out beautiful. There's not too much there. I may just try to wipe that off. But we want to avoid that iron being too hot. Um, it can cause an inconsistent finish. Um, this one that I'm using unfortunately doesn't have very fine control so it's low, medium, or high. It seems like medium is too high so hopefully low is going to work. And it's probably been almost two years since we did a video on this. Probably because the results were meh. They weren't, they weren't great. But I'm feeling a little bit more confident now, so. So the good news is that as long as you don't melt it, you can always wipe it clean and start again. Okay, so I'm gonna cut another piece of foil here. Something 
I think I'm gonna try doing is actually taping the foil down. Okay, I feel like this might be a better way to start. You can see how there's a nice crisp edge to it. We'll see how it goes. Okay. Now you don't want to linger on a spot too long for fear of melting it, but you do need to be there long enough for it to transfer, so it's a bit of a delicate balance here. Okay, so I can see it's starting to come through. So you'll start to see the actual letters of the logo, and that's a positive sign. It's really hard to tell what's transferred, but I don't think we're quite there yet. Something else I should also mention is that if you accidentally touch the case um, with the edge of the iron, you could transfer to the case. But again, you can just scrub that off. Ideally, we try to avoid that, but inevitably I usually do it. All right, do we want to have a look at it and see how it is? I hope this tape thing helped. Oh, pretty close, friends, pretty close. All right, so there's a few areas in the middle that need a little bit of help. 
but look at that outer ring. Oh, it is so good. Oh my goodness. So yes, this, I know it looks awful, but not a huge problem. Um, so that you just come in with a little bit of polish. remaining dots of that once we're done in a second here but let's see if we can't just get the rest of this cleared up okay I can also see that in my haste here I got a little bit of <laughs> polish in there so hang on okay this is looking amazing so we just need a little bit more there so what I'm gonna do is get a another small piece Let's just check out, be clear on where we need to focus our energy here. So we could use a little bit upstairs on the outside of the letters. The C, the O, and the P on the bottom are really where most of that energy needs to go. Sorry if I'm giving anyone anxiety the way that I'm taping this. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Nice and taut.
Okay, let's see how that went. Probably covered the entire logo in gold now at this point in terms of like inside. Oh, it worked. Oh my gosh, that looks so good. Look at that. That's how you know you did a good job. <laughs> that is a beautiful transfer. Ta-da! Perfection. Okay, so here it is. So I still have a little bit there. And of course, we can scrub away at this. But we did it. I'm honestly shocked I didn't transfer more onto the um, case in that pass because it really felt like I was about to. And again, the more precise you are, you don't have to do this step of scrubbing off all of the excess gold, but is what it is. Oh my gosh, we did it. I'm so proud of us. Okay. Beautiful. So there it is, there is the logo. You can see that beautiful gold shine on it. Absolute perfection, so. Hey, there you go. So, roll of the heat transfer foil, um, an iron. This one is made by uh, Clover. And uh, some patience in TLC. You know what? I think the thing that really made it different there was just my last minute decision to tape it down. Um, that really held it in place before the foil would kind of bubble up with the heat and shift and I think that's what was causing the frustration so I would recommend that if you do that that, that you try the tape method but again at your own risk <laughs> um, it can be it definitely you definitely can melt the logo I have done it before and um, you may want to try on a set that you are not super attached to if you're going to try this um, but uh, we took that set from looking pretty gross to looking pretty great. So I'm very excited about that. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, if you are looking to repair some logos on your sets, that's one method that is effectively like restoring how they do that in the factory by heat stamping. Um, of course they used a machine to do it and probably was a lot more precise um, and temperature controlled everything optimized for that but uh, this at-home method can work for you if you've got the right stuff so there you have it repairing the logo we did a great job well um i'm pretty happy with how that turned out i think it looks awesome the foil is a little bit brassier than the typical poly pocket gold logo tone um and then that's probably the hardest part is sourcing a gold foil that's going to be just that right gold. But um, I think we can agree it looks pretty awesome and shiny. Um, and I'm really, really happy with it. So um, that was successful. I have not had a ton of success in the past. And I will say I think that the best change that I made in this video was the sudden last minute idea to tape the foiled down to get it really nice and taut over the logo before I attempted to foil it. If you're just holding it and you try to foil it, I find that it shifts and bubbles, then you end up with a lot of gaps and inconsistencies. Um, so this worked really, really well um, with the tape. So I would say save yourself the frustration if you're going to try this and tape it down, <laughs> get it nice and tight like I did and it should be a lot easier to get a good um, 
finish that way. The other thing is that you do run the risk of melting the logo. So you really want to try this on a set that you don't love and are okay if it gets destroyed. So if you have something that's really trash, that's the best place to get your practice out before you try it on anything that is precious to you. Um, I don't know that I would try this on a piece that is part of my permanent collection, but as a duplicate that, you know, is not nearly complete, Polly's in need of some surgery there. Um, I don't feel bad about doing that. So that's, um, I think an experiment that worked out. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think it's awesome, but just again, full disclaimer, <laughs> be careful because you can wreck your stuff. Same thing goes with retro writing, of course, but um, when the results are good, they're great and sometimes it's worth it. So really, really happy that we gave this another try. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. What have you tried to restore logos? I will say I've also tried using paints and markers, uh, like gold metallic markers. The finish just hasn't been correct. It's been more of a, um, what's the word? Uh, not polished, but, oh, I'm missing that word. Um, more of a matte finish is really what I'm trying to say, but there's a specific word for it with metals. Anyway, um, it doesn't have that shine to it and it's that shine that makes it look authentic. So having a finish that isn't, you know, that perfect like mirror-like finish isn't going to come off the same way. So while paints are a little bit easier to color match, they don't look as good. So I would love to hear your thoughts on that. Um, if you've tried this in the past, if you've had success with something else and you feel like it really does pull off the same effect, please share in the comments. Um, I know that a lot of people will probably find this video trying to figure out if they can restore the logo on their Polly Pocket. So this uh, could be helpful for them too. So please, if you've tried something, leave it in the comments. Um, whether it worked or not, it's also good to weed out the stuff that just has not worked for people. So uh, that's it for me for today. Um, thanks for being with all of the restoration videos. I've had a really fun time working on these restorations and this one in particular was very satisfying. And don't worry, I'm still working on getting things together for the auction. I'm planning on doing that mid-April as soon as I have a date set and more details. Don't worry, you will be the first to know. But if you have not hit the subscribe button yet, also do that. That is the best way to stay up to date on all things Vintage Polly Pocket. I come out with new videos every Monday and Thursday. And if you're subscribed, you will be notified and any updates on things like the auction will be on my channel first. So that's the best place to stay up to date. And if you are on social media, you can find me on social media. Just look up Pocket Vintage Toys. You'll find me on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. Those are the best places to connect with me outside of YouTube. But yes, that is it for me for today. So as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.